you'll see the Bible study at about 7.15, so we're right about there. Yes. Amen. How many of you know that the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life? Right. Amen. The Old Testament taught us what sin was and taught us what uh, would send you to hell. But in the New Testament, we got the good news. Amen. And uh, we got life through the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're glad you've got the Holy Ghost, say amen. amen. The Holy Ghost is not uh, in your life. And the Holy Ghost is God himself. It is not in your life to make you lifeless and to make you miserable. Amen? amen. The Holy Ghost comes into you to give you abundant life. Amen. And so I'm going to be teaching a series tonight called The Fire Thief. The Fire Thief. Uh, I made the mistake tonight before church of trying to burn some things in the burn bell back behind my house. And uh, it, it just seems like everything that was in that barrel was not quite dry enough. Have you ever tried to start a fire with, and the wood's still wet? And no matter how much you try, the moisture that's in that wood steals the flame. Uh, there are things in the life of a believer that will steal the fire that's in your soul. If you've been serving God for any length of time, you know that there are things that will zap your strength. There are things that will take the fire out of your Heart. You'll come to church and don't even feel like you want to be here. You'll hear a gospel song and it seems like it just does nothing for you. Well, when those things begin to show up and when things begin to steal the fire out of your heart, that's a dangerous position to be in. And so we're going to take our text tonight from 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 38 through 40. And... Uh, Brother Dan, if you could put that up on the screen, that'd be great. 1 Kings 18, verses 38 through 40. Listen to the word of the Lord. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Wouldn't it be something if in our town of Elwood here, we challenged all of the Satan worshipers. And we said, we're going to put God on the test at the, the city fountain. And we're going to set up a sacrifice. And uh, the God who answers by fire, that's the God we're going to serve. And we got out there and began to praise the Lord. And we began to worship the Lord. And, and so did they. And uh, when they did all they were going to do, and nothing happened, then we would call on the name of Jesus Christ. And fire would come down out, out of heaven and lick up the water out of the fountain. And would consume whatever we brought to that. That's exactly what happened in 1 Kings 18 with Elijah. You've heard the story. Uh, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones. Have you ever seen fire so hot that it, it actually consumed a stone? I mean, we're talking about the fire from heaven. And the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. You know why church has become powerless and people aren't running to the altar? Because the fire thief has stole the fire out of the pulpits of America. Yeah, that's right. There's no fire in the pulpit and there's no fire in the pew. Yeah. Because denominations and churches that used to rejoice in the Lord openly. I mean, dancing down the aisles and speaking in other tongues and, uh, you know, you stayed because the Spirit of the Lord was so good that you didn't want to go home. But now everybody's staring at the clock and can't wait to get out of church. You know I'm telling the truth. Why is that? Because there's there's a fire thief that has stolen the fire out of the church. Yeah. Now, how do we get that back? That's what we're really going to focus on. Uh, verse 40, and Elijah 
said unto them, Take now the prophets of Baal, and let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon, and he slew them there. He slew them. He killed the prophets of Baal. He said, we're not worshiping Baal anymore. And there's a lot here uh, that to unpack, but we're going to see uh, what Elijah had in him. Uh, Elijah was not filled with the Holy Spirit, but he was moved on by the Holy Spirit to do these great miracles. And Elisha did double the miracles that Elijah did. Where are the miracles in our world today? Where are the healings? Where are people getting filled with the Holy Ghost at? Where are people coming to the altar convicted of their sin? We've got to get the fire back in our hearts and it doesn't matter if you call yourself pastor, apostle, prophet, church member, saint of God. We've all got to have the fire of the Holy Ghost in our life and in our community that we call the church. Amen. I am just like you. I long for the days when the Holy Ghost moves into a service and completely takes over. Yes. I long for the days where we're singing a song. And it didn't matter what we're singing, but the Holy Ghost comes in and people just begin to get out of the aisles and come to the altar and weep because the Spirit of the Lord has overwhelmed them. But what we've got today is people nitpicking the songs rather than worshiping the God who we're singing to. That's the truth. And we've got to leave behind the arguments and pursue the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so I read a quote today that really touched my heart. Jim Elliott, who was martyred for his faith, he said, forgive me for being so ordinary while claiming to, God, to know such an extraordinary God. We talk about the Holy Ghost. We talk about the fire. We talk about all these things. But do we have it? Do we have it? Do, are we filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost on Monday, or is it just a Sunday only thing? I'm telling you, you can be reignited by the power and the passion of the Holy Ghost. And, and I, for one, as a pastor, I don't want to play church anymore. I've got to be full of passion and fire of the Holy Ghost. And if we leave here, there's no telling what God will do in our lives, in our homes, in our community. If we are impassioned and on fire with the Holy Ghost, somebody say amen. 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 Don't talk about a great God if he's not great to you. Right. Don't talk about the power of the Holy Ghost if there's no power in you. We've got to get that back. And I'm going to tell you how. When Jesus taught on uh, the subject of prayer, he said, pray this. He said, pray, thy kingdom come. Whose kingdom is it? It's God's kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. I was praying tonight in the prayer room. I said, God, in heaven, people don't lack for anything. In heaven, there's no sickness. In heaven, there's no sadness. In heaven, there's no depression. In heaven, everything is wonderful. Lord, let your kingdom come and your will be done down here like it is in heaven. That's right. Lord, let the Spirit have complete control in the church. And Lord, give us that freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost just like it is in heaven. Amen. And our, our praying... What we're praying for is not what I want. Not what I want. When I get down to pray, the hardest thing I have to accomplish is quit praying for what I want. Because I want things that please me. I want things that suit my agenda. I want things that align with my way of thinking. But it's thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I'm learning that if I want to have the fire and the passion of God in my heart, I've got to lay my will down and make it thy will be done. Right. Amen. In the book of Revelation, 
I want to drive this home and set a foundation tonight about this church that is on fire. Because if, if you believe in your heart that just coming to church, singing a few songs, going home, there's no difference in your life, you just feel more religious, if you think that's the church God wants, it's not. That's right. It's not at all. And in the book of Revelation, Jesus said to John, he talked about seven individual churches. He wasn't talking about the universal church. He talked about seven individual churches that he talked about the good things they did. But he also pointed out the fact that they had lost some things that they needed to get back. And I'm here to tell you that life church is not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But I'm striving for perfection. Right. And, and if I've lost the fire in my soul, I've got to get it back. And when you see what Jesus said to the churches in the book of Revelation, and this was all prophecy about the end time. How many of you believe the church is in the end time? Yeah. So it's talking directly to us. To the church of, of Laodicea, he said, I want you to either be hot or cold. No in the middle. The church of Laodicea, God said, you, you say you're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and you've got all this money, and you've got all this, you've got a great building, you've got all these fancy programs, but where is the fire that you had when you first got saved? He said, actually, you're naked in the eyes of God and blind, and he said, go buy or pay the price for spiritual eye salve. I want your eyes to come open to the fact that you're lukewarm. He said, because if you continue to stay lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Now, that's a horrible thing to say. It's kind of gross, actually. But God was trying to say to that church in the end time that you're not hot and you're not cold. And you've got some blindness, some spiritual blindness. He said, wake up and get on fire again. Amen. And then to the church in Ephesus, he said, you've done good, but you've left your first love. What does that mean? It means you've done great. You've become professional Christians. You feed the poor. You do these things. But you've, you've lost that excitement you had when you first got fire baptized by the Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus said to the church in Ephesus. He said, remember therefore from where you have fallen. And listen to this word. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand. In other words, I'm going to re remove the preacher from your midst. I'm going to remove the light from your midst. And uh, he said, unless you repent. There are times where individuals, I don't care how saved you are, you need to repent. You never get so perfected that you never need to say, God, forgive me. I've lost some things I used to have. I've lost some zeal that I used to have. I've lost that fire in me that would walk in the middle of Walmart and pray for anybody or talk to anybody about the Lord. I've lost that fire in my heart. And Jesus said to the church, he said, you need to repent because you lost your first love. I'm here to tell you, people can brag about how many years they've been in the church, but if you don't love the church and don't love your pastor and don't love the Lord, I mean love the Lord, you've got to go back and fall in love with them all over again. I've been married, married to my uh, beautiful wife 26 years, and there have been times where we've had moments of, of intense fellowship, Amen. and we've had to apologize to one, one another. I've had to buy her some flowers occasionally. I've had to, to say to her, it doesn't matter who wins the argument. What matters is, is that we stay together and stay in love. And she'll smile at me and say, just shut up and kiss me. 
<laughs> but that would have never happened had I dug my heels in and said, I want it my way, and if I can't be right, then I'm not budging, and we'd still be arguing. And that's what happens in the church. People lose their first love. When you first get saved, everything is wonderful. God is wonderful. Every song is wonderful. The Word of God is so alive to you. But it's after you've been in the church for so many years, you start to get jaded and skeptical. And, and I don't believe it like that preacher preaches. And I'm going to find my own way to preach it. And I'm going to see that's what God doesn't want. God does not want the church arguing, fussing, right. losing the love for God that you used to have. Sometimes you've got to get down at the altar, repent, and say, God, I've lost something that I don't, I don't feel like I used to feel. I don't feel the passion like I used to feel. I don't feel the zeal in my heart like I used to feel. Right. Yeah. And listen, you can't blame that on everybody else. It's between you and God. Amen. To the church at Pergamos, read this for yourself. What, what Jesus said to the church to John to tell the church at Pergamos, he said, You have believed false doctrine and you're sexually immoral. I don't mean to bring up subjects that aren't suitable for children tonight, but I want to tell you something. There's a lot of things that go on on people's phones. And at their computers right. and on their iPad and what they watch on TV at home, but they come to church and act like they're so on fire for God. But you need to clean your house up because the Lord sees it. Yeah. 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 Sure does. You don't need to let anything come into your house that even smells like false doctrine. And, and furthermore, if, if somebody within the Life Church family has a disagreement with what I preach from this pulpit, you need to come to me right. and discuss it with me. Because this stepping around the pastor thing of, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to tell people they're believing the wrong thing. I'm going to say, well, that's not what the Bible says. Stop doing that. Because Jesus said the end time church will be guilty of believing false doctrine and there will be disunity. Disunity. You can't have fire in the church when people are scattered and broken. You know a, a way to kill a good fire? Find a good fire in a fireplace and, and take the biggest log out and sit it on the hearth there. Well, guess what? That fire will start to go out. You don't have a good fire without the unity that's needed. Amen. Amen. I'm coming on strong here tonight because there's a devil who wants to steal the fire out of the church, and he's already done it to a degree. He wants to steal the fire out of the pulpit because preachers are afraid to preach the truth for fear of people leaving the church. For fear of people causing problems within the church. Listen, we need to take the fear out of the pulpit. And, and we need to get the fire of the Holy Ghost in our heart to such a burning passion that all we can do is come to church. All we can do is go out in the streets and share the good news. And forget about arguing about who's right and who's wrong and who did this and who did that. Stop all of that because that's part of the trick of the enemy that he's going to use in the end time church. Yes, right. The church of Thyatira. Jesus said to the church of Thyatira, but I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel. Now this is not a pick on women thing. What that's talking about is the spirit of Jezebel that can get in the church. And what that is not, listen to me, there's a lot of people who thought the spirit of Jezebel was somebody wearing a little bit of makeup on their face or a gold earring in their ear. That's not the spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel is an intimidating spirit that wants to intimidate the truth and wants to intimidate the people in the pew. 
It fractures the church. One side believes this person. One side believes that person. And nobody believes the truth. Amen. The scripture says, you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Everybody in the church that calls himself a preacher, apostle, prophetess is not a preacher, apostle, or prophet. That's right. right. Amen. But the end time church will go, ooh, that looks spiritual. Yep. Ooh, I, ooh, that gives me goosebumps. I don't care how much it gives you goosebumps if it's not coming straight out of this book and is not biblically based. Stay away from it. Yeah, right. Because it will drag you away from the fire. Of the church. Amen. The Bible says that she calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice, listen, sexual immoral immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. She was given time to repent but would not. Be careful of people even in the church community that refuse to repent and refuse to uh, give up doctrines that cause people to get comfortable with sin. Right. There are some people that will tell you, listen, we all sin a little bit every day, and that's what the grace of God is for. And you know what? I'll just sin today and, and uh, repent about it later. That's a doctrine that goes straight out of hell. Sure is. And it'll show the fire out of the church because if you come to a church and you believe everybody gets away with everything and they just... You know, it's all about grace. It's all about love. You'll find a church in just a couple of years that will not have the fire of the Holy Ghost anymore. That's right. Because sin is justified. And immorality is justified. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm coming on strong to set a foundation because the Lord does not want a church that lets things in and lets behaviors go on that will steal the fire out of the altar. Right. When's the last time in this church you saw an on fire altar call service? Mm -hmm. Is that my fault? No. Is that your fault? No. It's all of our fault. Because we've got to get back to the thing that starts the fire and it's the exact same thing that happened on the day of Pentecost they gathered together in an upper room and they sought the face of God. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, we've got to get back to where we started. Amen. Where the Spirit of God is the most important thing in our hearts and our lives. I love the Word of God, but I'm tired of arguing about the Word of God. I love the Word of God, but we've got to get the Spirit in our life that doesn't kill us, but brings life into us. Right. Remember, the liver kills, but the spirit gives life. Yeah. Amen. The church at Sardis, Jesus said, I know your works, you have the reputation of being alive, but you're really dead. What was the book of Revelation trying to say? Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my of God. Uh, I know I've said some pretty weighty things tonight, folks. But what I'm saying is, is as a church, if we go through something worse than COVID, if we go through something that cripples this nation. Are we going to be alive spiritually enough to continue being a church? Or are we going to do what one out of every five churches is doing in America right now? That's closing their doors. The statistics just came out today. One in every five churches in America is closing their doors. And they're blaming it on, blaming it on COVID. But it's not COVID, folks. If the church was weak before COVID, it wouldn't survive COVID. 
But the church has got to get on fire, full of the Holy Ghost, loving God's Word, shouting amen when the preacher preaches it, and giving our hearts back to God, falling in love with Jesus, and getting everything out of the way that's in the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. God is telling the end time church that a passionless church with no fire is not what God wants. Let me tell you some things that God is calling the church back to. If you trust me as your pastor, if you trust me as a preacher of the gospel, I'm telling you God is calling the church back to prayer and repentance. Yeah. Yeah. I have never seen a revival that did not have repentance involved in it. All of the great revivals that have come through time, people came and repented and said, God, forgive me if there's anything wrong in my heart or my life that's not pleasing you. And they came back to focus prayer. Well, I don't pray like that person. I pray in my own way. Listen, put down your own way and let's get together and pray. Yes. When do we do it? Come early on Sunday. Spend 10 minutes in the prayer room and get on fire for God. I guarantee you that service will be one of those in, in fiery services you've ever been in. That's right, man. Hallelujah. I've been really trying to discipline myself every day as the pastor of this church to not get focused on stuff that doesn't really matter. And get back down to reading God's word or reading a good Holy Ghost filled book and spending some time praying. Because listen, it mattered to Jesus in the book of Revelation and he spoke to the end time churches. He said, I don't want you lukewarm, I want you on fire for God. Right. We've got to go back to our first love and our first works. Ask yourself this question. What was I like when I first got saved? Was I happier? Was I more enthusiastic? When I first got saved, what's the difference in my behavior from when I first got saved to now? Do I come to church like I did when I first got saved? Well, Pastor, that's too much to ask of us. No, it's not. You can fall in love with your Savior all over again. You can open the Bible when the Holy Ghost has really lit a fire in your heart and you'll say, man, I've never saw that before. I better go tell somebody what I got a revelation of. Yes. Right. You know, sometimes I, I feel embarrassed. And I don't mean to bring up Facebook because it can be good and bad. But sometimes I think, well, maybe I'm too spiritual on Facebook because really all I really ever put on there is my daily devotion or a scripture, and I don't put too much else on there. I used to. But something struck me in the heart and, and said, you can't be too full of the word in 2020. You can't talk too much about Jesus in 2020. This world needs Jesus. This world needs the Holy Ghost. This world needs to repent. You can't talk too much about Jesus in 2020. I'm not going to apologize because I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm not going to apologize because I, I use Facebook as a platform to share my faith. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to apologize because I am proud of the Word of God. I'm proud of what I know about the Word of God. I'm not apologizing anymore. He said, well, you sound too religious. You sound too, listen. They said the same thing about Jesus. They persecuted him. They persecuted the apostles. And maybe they'll persecute you and call you, oh, look at them, they're goody two-shoes. But listen, let them say whatever they want. But when the trumpet sounds, you're going up and they're not. That's right. Amen. And I've decided I want to take as many people to heaven with me as I can. Because as bad as COVID is, it's still not as bad as hell. And hell is a horrible place yep. with fire and torment and gnashing of teeth. And do we not believe in hell anymore? We've got to get that fire back. We've got to remove any kind of false doctrine or 
anybody who, listen, I'm not about getting rid of people in the church and forcing people to leave and any of that. But if you cannot repent to God, you don't really want to belong to a church anyway. Right. No, that's right. If you think you know it all and you think you've got the absolute perfection of your theology and, and you're perfect in all of your knowledge of God, listen, I don't know everything about the Bible. And any good Bible scholar will tell you, I haven't learned it all yet. So put the religious weapons down and say to yourself, Lord, set my heart on fire. And if I need to learn something new, help me to learn it. Amen. Amen. We can't have false doctrines in the church. We can't have people that refuse to repent in the church. Humble yourself before God and seek his face. And you'll get a fire in your heart. And you'll find things to do in the kingdom of God that you haven't done in a long time. Right. Amen. And the church has got to deal with this thing called the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit. It was a spirit. What is the Jezebel spirit? We're going to talk about some of these things at length. And I'm running out of time. But there is a spirit that will cause people to be intimidating and a bully. I've seen it in the pulpit, and I've seen it in the pew. And if you're going to have good church, nobody's a bully. Right. Nobody's a bully. I'm your pastor, but I love each and every one of you. I'm not trying to bully you tonight, but I'm trying to get us back on fire with God. And this church would be so exciting that you have you drag people to church every weekend because... And you'll have things going on in your home. You'll start a Bible study you've never started before. Why? Because you want to see somebody saved. Yes. Amen. That's how they did it back after Azusa Street. The churches were too small. They didn't have buildings. They started prayer meetings in their home. You're more than welcome to start a good old-fashioned prayer meeting in your home. But don't get to the home and then start talking about the pastor. Right. That's right. Have prayer meetings. Get so full of the Holy Ghost that you don't want to talk about nothing but except how good God is. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, this study we're going to do, it's crucial to the health of every congregation. Yes. Because we're living in the end time. And the Bible says that in the end time, those that will fall, will fall. The tree will be shaken, and the fruit that's barely hanging on will fall to the ground. The Bible tells us that in the end times, the devil would even deceive the very elect, meaning those that are leaders of the church. The devil will deceive the leadership of the church. And, and here's one of the things that you've got to remember. Weariness, when it sets into a church... And when it sets into a pastor, when it sets into the pastor's wife, when it sets into the pew, weariness will cause your, the fire to leave your services. And here's what happens. We've got so many irons in the fire. We come to church, sit down on the pew. Come on, preacher, entertain me. Sing my favorite song. Listen, that's not what church is. I know we get tired physically. I know many of you work a tremendous amount of hours and you've got a lot on your plate. But when we come to the church, that's the time to rejoice and to be re-energized, renewed in the Holy Ghost. Find that fire in the Holy Ghost that we need. That we need. Amen. And knowing what steals the passion out of your soul. And knowing how to reignite the passion in your heart is what we're trying to do here. Now, listen, folks, I know you're probably thinking, oh, the pastor's mad. He's, there's all this stuff going on in the church. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we've got to be aware of the end time church and what the devil's going to try to do in the end time church. Right. I've talked with countless people in this congregation and they've said, What's happened? What happened to the church? Why is church not like it used to be? I've talked to people and they've said, you know, I just don't feel what I used to feel. 
And I can preach till my lips fall off. I can teach with the passion in my heart, but I cannot make you reignite the fire in your soul. Yeah. You have to do that. Right. You have to say, God, I don't even have the desire to pray anymore. God, I, when I come to church, I'm so tired. I just don't, I, I just, I'm looking at the clock the whole time. God, I don't enjoy it. Tell God all about it. Right. Yeah. Tell him what's going on in your heart. Tell him, God, I need to be refilled, renewed, overflowing with rivers of living water coming out of me. Amen. I need something, God, that will wake me up in the middle of the night. I can't, I can't sleep till I go pray. I need, God, your word to come alive to me because it's been too long. Yes. Hallelujah. And we're going to talk next week about the man Elijah. Uh, isn't it something how we read in our text tonight? Here he is calling fire down out of heaven. He's shaking his fist at uh, Jezebel. He's cutting the heads off of, of priests who worship Baal. And you're going to see that right after that, Jezebel shook her finger at Elijah. And he took off running and hid and said, God, this ain't fair. I'd rather just die. Something stole the fire that was in him. And you've got to be aware, because the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. fire. So if you've got the Holy Ghost and you've not got no fire, I know that sounds country. <laughs> but if you've got the Holy Ghost but there's no fire in you, something's not clicking just right. Yeah. Amen. And, and I want to be on fire for God. I don't know about you, but... I want to come to Sunday church and then get on Facebook and say, you're not going to believe what happened in church today. Right. I, I, I want people to come to Wednesday night Bible study that have never come to Wednesday night Bible study and we can get to shout and praise the Lord even on old dry Bible study night. Right. Yeah. Amen. It can happen. Yes. It can happen. I want people to bring in demon-possessed people on Wednesday night and say, I've got a child that's something's wrong in them, and this whole church begin to pray, and that young person be delivered. It can happen. Yes. Yes. But you've got to get your fire back. Yeah. And you've got to know what steals the fire out of your heart and out of your life. And you can't blame everything on the devil, even though he's behind it. But, but you've got to say, God... Put a passion in me that is unquenchable. Right. Put a fire in me that the devil can't blow out. Right. Remember the story of the big bad wolf and the three pigs? You know, when they found security, they got in a strong house, a brick house. And the church has got to be a brick house, a strong house, a house that the devil can huff and puff at, but he cannot right. harm us. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many slide for the church of the living God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand tonight. We're going to pray. And uh, we're going to pray for those who joined us on Facebook. We're going to pray for this church. And you are the church. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many wants the fire to come back into your heart like, like you've never had before? Yes. Praise God. I tell you, Sunday morning, I, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen in here. But I want the fire to take over and us to just begin to have the, the gifts of the Spirit begin to move again. Yes. I want to see the Lord begin to heal the sick. People begin to be delivered. And the altar to be what it always should have been. And that's an altar that's on fire. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I tell Lord, we need the fire to fill our hearts again. Lord, we, we are crying out to you, Lord in repentance if there's anything in our heart or our life that is not pleasing to you we ask you for forgiveness lord we humble ourselves before your throne and before your word and lord we submit ourselves to your word and we ask you lord to not make us like a church like laodicea or pergamos or thyatira lord set a fire in this church life church and god cause our hearts to burn with passion for your word 
and passion for your kingdom. God, fill us to overflowing with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And do not let the devil steal our joy. Do not let the devil steal our faith. Do not let the devil steal our passion for you, God. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody shout, Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you tonight.